All right, good afternoon and welcome to John Box Watercolor. Today we're going to be painting a scene from San Gimignano, Italy. But before we get started, if you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up. And if you like what you see, consider subscribing. I'm going to have three to four new videos coming out each week. All right, I'm going to put our reference photo over here on the right hand side of the screen. And today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be trying to paint a scene that encompasses a lot of light where the buildings themselves are having direct light shown onto them. So I've got my sketch over here on the left and I've kept everything <clears throat> pretty similar. Um, I've changed the angle just slightly and of course I've added my figures in there, but I'm going to keep it fairly true to form. And um, yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and spray my paper here. My palette's already wet. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a flat brush and just throw a little bit of just some dirty water here on the top of our painting just to help keep everything very light. And so when I add some blue for our sky, we're going to be using some cobalt blue. It should just help that color run a little bit and maintain its light. That's gonna be the key to this painting is anytime you've got a building in direct light or a bright sunny day, you've really, really gotta let things stay nice, nice and bright. All right, just a little cobalt blue and I'm just putting that straight into my somewhat dirty palette there. Or I should say it's, it's fairly dirty. It's not really somewhat dirty. All right, let's pull some blue down here. I'm just patting along the side of that building. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just relaxing right now. I am i don't care if this bleeds into um, <clears throat> my buildings right now, just because I'm gonna come back here and I'm just gonna dab them out just slightly there and clean that up. I'd rather have a nice flowing wash than trying to paint around every, you know, every little thing. Always keep a paper towel on hand and you can come back and, and work that stuff in. All right, we're going to keep a, a warm color over on this building here. I'm going to grab a little yellow ochre and I'm going to put it down here actually, just since we've got so much cobalt in that, that top pail there. And let's grab a little cobalt. A little burnt sienna, just a touch of some of this dirty paint to kind of help neutralize it. And let's throw it on there. And that's already, that is too dark. Okay. I'll pull that down there. Pull that down there. And I want to leave some white for those, um, those windows there. <clears throat> We're gonna be coming back and working on those in a little bit. Now for my awning, let's grab a little orange, just a little something. I wanna keep that fairly clean there. Okay, I think that looks nice so far. I may just take, I always want to have just a little bit of, you know, kind of darker colors bleeding in. And while this is still wet, I'm just going to make somewhat of a, a dark, warm color here and just, just tap along the top edges of these windows <clears throat> just to give it a little something going there. All right. So I'm going to leave that alone. Now let's start thinking about this background building here. I've dropped my paper towel. What did I do with that? Oh, I stuck it in my pocket. All right, I'm going to come back. I'm going to blot along the edge there. <clears throat> Let's blot along this roof. Yeah, all right, like that. Just give that a little light spray to keep it nice and moist. We're going to keep working. I'm going to really... Kind of yellow up this roof up here I think that's a little bit too bright 
remember this building is is in theory well it, it's further in our background here so i don't want to have it nearly as dark as the building to my left that we just worked on it's got to be a little bit lighter and i'm okay if that roof kind of spills into the sky a little bit it'll sort of help just keep everything soft and push it back in the distance a little bit. I'm, I'm totally okay with that. And I think we're gonna actually leave. Let me just pull a little roof there. I'm thinking of just leaving our, our white of the paper there to really keep this thing nice and bright. Now, <clears throat> one thing I've gotta be careful of is I can't have this roof line and this roof line be the same tone. This roof line needs to be much lighter as it's in the distance. And I wanna be able to push that back. You've gotta have less and less detail as you work your way back. It's really the only way that you can get that sense of, of depth in your painting. So this is looking pretty good. <clears throat> Let me blot that out. Now, later on, I'm gonna be adding some shadows under this awning. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna darken it up here. And I'm going to paint around these figures here. And again, I'm keeping everything fairly light. This is our first wash, but down here, it's no big deal to add in some darks because it's gonna be very dark underneath this, this awning here, so. The darker I make it on my first wash, the easier it will be to darken on my second. I'm just gonna pull some lines there. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, let's go ahead and work on some foreground here. And I'm, I'm trying to decide, I really can't decide if I wanna leave this completely white. I think that may be a touch aggressive. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw in a, a warm color from down here that was already in our palette. Maybe I'll leave just that tower white there. And I do need to leave these umbrellas white. Uh, just because I've got a building in direct light here, and I've got umbrellas in front of them that are also in direct light. And so I've got to be able to get some type of contrast. And so <clears throat> I'm going to have to leave these umbrellas perfectly white there. Okay. And we'll pull that through. I'm just blotting out where that, that tower would be. But you know what? I think we're just gonna have to add some color to it. I think that's the only way we're gonna be able to do that. I'll leave some white specks there. That's not a problem. Okay, that looks nice. All right, let's work on our foreground here. Gonna keep this pretty warm. It's kind of the theme so far of this painting. And let's just move it right across the bottom there. Again. Being careful to miss those figures to my left over there. Let's neutralize it just a little bit. It's a little too cool. Add some yellow ochre back into it. <clears throat> We're just going to keep working here. Now again, the key to doing these lighter paintings is you've got to have a, a very light baseline to start. The darker you get, you got to remember with, with each wash, each layer of watercolor we're going to be adding onto this, we're going to be getting darker and darker. And so if you start at a point that's too dark, <clears throat> you're kind of ruined from the get-go. You've got to have a very soft wash going here. Remember, we're going to go in, we're going to create contrast later on, but for this first wash, it's got to be pretty light. One thing I do want to try to do we lost some of that red there and we'll see how that turns out it may be too dark we'll let that kind of spread out for a minute before we try to mess with things 
and well, so I'm going to pull a line right under those umbrellas just so we make sure and get that shape broken out there. Okay, looking around here, since we decided to add color to our buildings, I think it's safe to add just a little bit darker of a roof there and up here as well. Yeah, just being careful there. Trying to get the shape right. <clears throat> that may be a little too dark. But again, like I said, we're, we're playing that game here of creating contrast, but again, realizing that, hey, this is our first wash and we need, we need to keep things pretty light. Okay. Yeah, I kind of wish I just hadn't touched that, but you know what? I think we'll be just fine. Okay, that looks good. Our awning did bleed out a little bit, so that's going to be okay. And yeah, I think, I think we're looking good here. So I'm going to let this dry, and we're going to come back and start our second wash. All right, we are back and ready to start our second wash. Now, normally I like to start with objects that are further in the distance, but we're gonna kind of leave this area blank here for a minute because we're gonna try to abstract to fill that in. I think the first thing we're gonna start with is gonna be this tower here. Now, <clears throat> whenever you're painting with for buildings that are still in light, we've gotta be sharp. We've gotta get that contrast that we're looking for quickly and efficiently and it's it's got to be on the first or second brush stroke we really can't muddy it up or or work in the same way we would be able to if this was a, a shadow or something you can get away with that and so i'm just making a little mark there trying to see is it too light is it too dark and i think it's a little too dark i'm going to add some yellow ochre and then we're just we just got to go for it and I'm really going to try to not mess with that too much. Now, with all roofs, there's going to be kind of two tones. That under the, under the kind of roof overhang, and then there's going to be that lighter shadow on the building itself. And so we want to paint those. And two separate goes there. And then from here, I'm going to leave that alone and I'm just gonna let it sit. If I need to come back and work on it, it's gonna have to be when it dries up a little bit. And so I'm just gonna leave it alone. <clears throat> I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna make a stroke. Get that mixture a little bit more wet. And then I'm gonna run my brush just underneath it there to get that Get that shadow that we're looking for. Now, while I've got that on my brush, I may just make a couple of marks there in the background. All right, let's start working on a few windows here. Just grabbing some, this is some neutral tint, some neutral gray, some warm gray, a little burnt sienna here. And again, before I make that whole stroke, I'm just gonna make a, a little dot there. And I think that looks okay. I'm going to neutralize it just a little bit by adding some cobalt blue. And I'm going to pull it straight down like that. And again, you got to make a quick stroke and leave it alone. And that looks pretty nice. We've got some really good contrast there. I'm going to come up here and just add. I like how dark that is. Just add it on the very edge of that roof there. Now I'm going to warm this up by adding some of that, that burnt sienna. And I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to make just a couple of marks here to represent kind of the tops of a few window sills. And I'm going to pull it straight down. And I'm looking for, I want to see those breaks 
That's what you get from working with, with a dry brush. I want to see these kind of flex here. It just helps break that shape up a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. And we're just going to slowly work through. And you want to make these thinner than you think. We can always come back and thicken things up, but <clears throat> once it's on there, it's hard to make it go away. And as these get further away or down the, the line of the building here, I'm going to get rid of that top windowsill and really, really let them thin out a little bit to try and get some more depth on the painting there, okay? So that's looking pretty good. Let's work on some of these windows here. I'm going to use the exact same technique. I'm just going to use a slightly larger brush that I've lost somewhere. All right, there it is. Okay, now this brush is completely dry. And I'm just using that mixture that we had from earlier. Add a little bit burnt sienna. And we're going to work these windows here. Now, I'm just making that mark again. It seems a little cool to me. We're going to add some yellow ochre. Let's pull it down. Okay, that needs to be a little bit wetter. It's a little too dry. Add a little burnt sienna. We'll add some of that, that warm gray. Let's try that again. Okay, that's much better. I'm going to grab my smaller brush here and just add a couple of detail lines at the bottom here. And I think I'm going to want to thicken that line up. I want it to be a little bit more solid given how close this window is here. I should say these windows. Okay, I think that looks better. Okay, I'm going to leave this alone for a minute. Just let it sit. I'm going to start working underneath this awning here. It's a little ultramarine, a little warm gray, a little yellow ochre. Just trying to get something nice and dark here. Pull it just to the edge there. And I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to paint the majority of those larger shapes just with this larger brush. And then I'm going to come back and use my smaller brush to very carefully work around these shapes here. I'm going to try to get the impression of two individuals talking. This could be a, a storefront or something, a little newsstand. And by negatively painting around them and leaving that white paper there really helps get that contrast we are looking for. Okay, now let's add, let's make a, a dark warm color to put here. Just as the under shadow of that awning there, and that'll kind of bleed down a little bit, which will give a nice effect. All right, I'm going to spray this just to keep everything alive, and we're going to keep working through here. We've got good contrast on our buildings. I think one thing I want to do, though, is I want to add some shadow lines on this building here, and I'm going to lighten them up a little bit. Because what I want to try to do, maybe something like this, and I'm going to just mark, I don't know if you can see on screen here, I've got a block of wood that holds up my uh, palette here, and sometimes I'll just run my brush on it just to get some of that paint off. I'm just going to make just some very light textural lines there. I'll grab something a little warmer, run just above that awning there, 
just to give it a little bit of architectural detail. And again, less is more. You don't want to be tempted to go back in and keep working it. Leave it alone for a little bit before you go in or go back. Now, if these buildings are in light here, the, the sun's going to be coming from somewhat towards the front, but from this left side. So this building here should be casting a shadow out towards these umbrellas. And then obviously underneath the, these umbrellas, there's going to be a shadow as well. Now, this shadow is pretty important because it's what's going to divide our scene in half almost and it's what's going to help give us some really nice contrast through our painting <clears throat> now i'm mixing up something fairly dark it's pretty warm and i'm just trying to kind of squint my eyes here and get a feel for if that shadow is going to work or not i think the tone looks pretty good we've got some really really nice contrast and I'm just going to pull that out and run it straight over towards those umbrellas there. And <clears throat> I want to keep the shadow somewhat interesting here. Maybe pull that out for a shadow for one of these, these figures that's standing there. I think that looks nice. And now what I can do is work on the shadows of the individuals and things that are going to be underneath this awning here. Okay. Now, for this part, all I'm going to do, I've got a little bit of something cooler there. Let's grab something a little warmer. Now, all I'm doing here is I'm just abstracting in some little kind of dark shapes and things that later on, we're going to turn into figures and things underneath that umbrella scene there. And while I've got some of this darker paint here, I'm going to go ahead and work these two figures in here and let them kind of bleed down into that shadow a little bit there. Now, I think this underneath this umbrella here, it's, it's a little bit monotone. I want to add a little some lighter colors in there. It's pretty warm. Yeah, it just needs a little bit of work. Let's see if I can add a white in there. I just want to break this up a little bit more. I feel like those, those um, kind of mound-like shapes I did, they're a little too similar across the board here. So I'm going to create some arching hoops and things. These could be the backs of chairs. Again, just trying to keep it loose and abstract. I'm not going to draw every little thing through that section. That would take a very long time. All right, let's spray here. Now I do have a large figure in front that's walking with their dog. And I'm gonna kinda try to keep them a little bit lighter maybe. I think I'll add a suit on that person. But for now, I want them to be a little bit lighter. All right, let's get some lavender here and try to have this melt down through that shadow. All right, we've got some people back here. And let's just keep thinking about things. I've got this warm mixture I'm gonna put a little bit right at the top of our windows and see if it'll just bleed down a little bit. I may take just a touch there and draw a little line. And just to help with some of that architectural suggestion, get a little bit more um, contrast. Something I need to do as well I need to throw a little shadow on the underside of this umbrella here. Something just like that. I'll pull some vertical lines down as well. Okay. All right, this is starting to come together. This is looking very nice. Um, while I've got this, I'm going to spray this paper again. Again, just keeping everything wet and alive. I want to take this same shadow since I've got this figure here. I want to make sure I've got the same 
tone of shadow for that person and their dog. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those down. And then I'll add one more kind of pull out there for that, that person as well. All right, that's looking nice. Maybe just drop a little bit of a darker tone under that, that eave of that roof there. And just a few little details there. And you'll see, again, I mentioned this, as we work our way over here, we really want to try to break up some of this, <clears throat> this stuff. And what I may do as well, I may create a somewhat of a shadow over there. And I'm going to take some just pure water and kind of let it just bleed in to this building over here. Try to make it more seamless transition if I can. I'll take my paper towel and soften it up just a little bit. But I've got to have some abstractual kind of misty objects and ideas there to have this kind of fade back. And so that's that's the idea of what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to get some something to distract the viewer from this area and focus in here and here. Now, let's see, I'm gonna add, got a neutral gray, I've got some yellow ochre. Always, always have to add some, some little chimney details and roofing details. All I'm doing here is I'm just creating a few lines. It really does not take much and I'm going to take that same tone there, make it a little bit cooler. And oh, you know what? Mm. <laughs> I just talked about how the light of this is coming from left to right. I really want to pull these shadows. We're going to just have them run straight, straight down like that. I think will look okay. They're a little too cool. I'll just touch them. Warm them up a little bit. I think that'll be just fine. There we go. And again, just drawing some more little decorative things. You just have got to you've got to add a little little noise, I guess, to your your roofs and things. Yeah, that looks nice. Don't want to get too carried away. I kind of want to add a little architectural line just like I did on the other building. And, you know, these buildings in light, there's, there's such a fine line between going not enough and going overboard. And so you've just got to, you've got to build them up very slowly and take your time. Really take your time. Now, what I think might be kind of nice here is on this building, we've got this red awning. I kind of want to add some red shutters on it. I just want to see what that would look like. Hmm. Do I like it? Do I not? I think I like it. I'm just going to pull them a little bit further away from the window just to get that separation. And I'm going to leave that alone. Again, it's, it's hard to not overdo things. All right. Let's start building in some figures here. I'm going to grab that lavender again. Always one of my favorite colors. Let's go in here. There's just a little bit left of my burnt sienna. I need to, I need to refill that. We're going to come in, start marking some, some faces. All right. Put that one there. Yeah, I think that looks good. A little more burnt sienna. 
can't forget about these figures over here that are just kind of bleeding down into that that shadow i think that looks really nice now <clears throat> i want to work on this figure i want them to have a suit with some blue in the middle. I think that's what I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna grab some neutral tint. Just to get us started here. I'm gonna use my, my smaller brush to slowly build up this individual hair. something like that go pull some of that burnt sienna and put a little face on them and then they did have I've got a dog right here that i was just gonna try to abstract in here mm. all i'm doing there is i'm just putting few vertical lines. There's a little leash. Yeah, that looks nice. I wish I had a little bit more of that burnt sienna. His face turned out kind of gray. There we go. That looks much better. All right. I'm going to leave that alone. Let's work on these figures over here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to clean off my brush. I've got to be really careful because I want these folks to really pop out and so I want to make sure that my brushes aren't carrying too much extra paint that are going to kind of muddy things up. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of clean water on that person. Let's come over here and grab some lavender. I always like to look at the lavender. Okay. We're just going to keep working here. I've got a darker color. For the lower half of the body, pouring some of that neutral tint. All right, let's pull those legs down just a little bit. Let the audience know they're there. I'm going to cut around him just a little bit more. Yeah, that looks better. All right, let's do this figure. Hmm, what do we want to do? I think I'm going to do a light gray and then give them maybe a, like a red apron of some kind. I think that's what I'm going to try. We'll see how it works out. Just pulling some legs down there. Going from some Burnt Sienna, putting my faces in. All right, we're gonna fix those up here in a minute. But I need that to dry just a little bit first. Okay. All right, so far this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna let this dry and we're gonna come back and finish some things up. All right, we're back. This is nice and dry, and we're going to keep working and try to finish this up. I kind of changed my mind a little bit on what color of apron I want to do for this, this gentleman down here. I'm going to mix up some of that Chinese white I have in my top tail here. I think I'm going to do something with that. We'll see how it turns out. Let's see, a little bit of a strap there. Yeah, something, something like that. Now, in the shadows here, they're going to be vertical line. We're going to throw some vertical lines. Oops be all types of stuff back in those shadows and so I gotta make sure that 
We've got some stuff back there to fill it in a little bit. Okay. That looks nice. Add a few more dark areas through there. And in fact, I'm going to take that same that same white there we had and give that gentleman a a white shirt just to help help pop them out a little bit. Okay. Let's see. What else do we want to do? It's looking pretty good. I do think that we need some, maybe just some background folks back here, just walking along and I'm going to keep it all very abstract and blurry. I want to push that everything back there. I'm not going to add any legs or details on them. I think the, the shadow kind of bleeding in effect looks nice. The only thing I'm trying to figure out now is <clears throat> I've got this really open foreground and I think, I think I need to do something with it. And I may be making a mistake here, but I think I'm going to add a shadow in the lower portion of this, and it's going to be very dark. Um, this is one of those things where, again, I could be totally wrong, but there's really no way to test it. I just think it feels a little separated, you know? It's just the shadow kind of cuts through everything. I want to add somewhat of a shadow down below here. All right, I'm going to get my mop brush. It's got to be pretty dark, pretty warm. I'm going to try to match that other shadow kind of... Ooh, wow, that's powerful. Let's get a little bit more water. Let's darken this up. Neutralize it. Some of that. All right. A little bit more water. Okay. Now, what I'm thinking is, I just think it needs a little, little something here. Just to break it up a little bit. Again, could be totally wrong, but I'm going to go for it. I'm going to darken it up down towards the bottom. Just let that kind of sit there for a minute. Try to add some type of a detail that makes it look like a shadow. Yeah. And I think that that helped a lot. Let's pull that up, sharpen it. So it very clearly looks like a, a building. All right. I'm going to try to take away some of that top shadow if I can, but I think it's going to be tough. We may just have to stick with it. Oh. Okay, let me give this a good spray here. We're looking pretty good. I'm going to come in and add some gouache highlights to this while we're letting that shadow kind of dry and, and move around a little bit. We're going to see what else we need to add. Again, this is just white titanium gouache. And just using it to help bring out these folks in the shadows, especially. I got to be careful, I'm leaving fingerprints on my painting. Just a few dots through there. Some horizontal lines, those could be tables. A little something there. Maybe throw some vertical lines just behind those gentlemen. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Just gonna grab some dark paint here. Just gonna 
Again, I gotta be careful not to overdo it. Sometimes I don't take my own advice and I <laughs> keep adding a bit too much to the painting. Um, let's do just a vertical line or two back there. Guys, I do apologize. My camera ran out of battery while I was doing the very end of this painting and I just kept on working. I didn't even notice it. Luckily, there was only about maybe one more thing I did. Um, it cut out right as I was adding this vertical line here. And the only thing I did afterwards was I signed it and I kind of wiped through this shadow here with this paper towel just to add a little bit more, uh, just to add a little more interest. Um, <clears throat> in terms of things I like and don't like about the painting, just to recap here, I think our roof could have been just a little bit darker, maybe a little bit more red or orange in color up here. And I also think that I maybe overdid it here with these, these windows. When it comes to um, details that are in light, windows, doorways, roof edges, less is always going to be more, and I didn't take my own advice there, and I really should have just done one brush here and been done with it. Um, I think our figures look really nice. I think these windows on this back wall look nice as well. Overall, fairly pleased with the painting. I don't normally do a lot of stuff in direct light. I think maybe I could have found a way to include this right side of the building just so I had some more dark contrast here. It's just got a lot of light going on, which is fine, just as something a little different. But anyways, if you stayed with me to the end, I really appreciate it. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing. I'm going to have videos like these going up at least three to four days a week. So just remember to uh, keep your head down and keep on painting. Thanks.